Welcome back to the table. Today, Emily and I are taking a look and giving you a look at fairies and magical creatures. This is the next one from Forbidden Games. And I would say that this is an equal part area control with tile with, placement. With tile placement. Yep. Uh, you could also, I think, say that there's deck building, but I don't know that I would describe this game as a deck builder. But you are literally getting more cards, cycling through the deck, so it, it is an element to the game. There's card management, for sure. Yes. And you are literally building a deck, but I would say it's more card management than anything. Yeah, it definitely feels that way more than a deck builder. But yeah, it has area control going on, and then, interestingly enough, and equal parts, this tile placement where you're building out your own garden using these path tokens and these garden tiles. And they're the same yeah. tile because one side is the path, one side is the garden. And if you're doing the area control well enough, you're getting a fairy home in there as well. Exactly. So we're going to give you a brief overview of the game and just to give you an idea of how it plays. This plays from two to four players. We played it at two players. Uh, there's a few things taken out. I think with more players, you're going to feel a little bit more of that area control, yeah. just like you would in most area control games. In this case, we were fighting over these five different areas. You've got Earth, Trolls, Fae, Nature, and Beast. And those also correspond to the different varieties of cards that you might have in your hand. Everyone's going to start the game with the same four cards in their deck. Yep. And then you're going to slowly, depending on what players choose to do, add more cards from this display into your deck and get those cycled into your hand as well. So on a regular turn, what you're doing is you're getting to play one of your cards from your hand, either before or after, then taking an action. And there are five different actions we can do. So for example, one of the things you can do is you can gain trust. So you're literally just taking one of your kinship tokens and putting in one of the five areas around the board. So the reason you're doing this is for area control. At the end, the person who has the most is gonna score both their kinship tokens and all their opponents. Yeah, so if it's, it's one of those area controls, which I think is really cool, where the area gets really giant if people are battling over it, but whoever wins in the end gets a ton of it. points because everyone was battling over it. Second place is gonna get points equal to their own tokens in that space. If you're third place, you've just contributed points to the, to other, everyone else. To the <laughs> other players. But yeah, it's an interesting aspect of the area control. Now, regardless of what action you take, all the other players at the table are going to be able to follow by taking that exact same action. The only thing they aren't able to do is play that card. So if, it's your, if you're the active player, you can play that card, like Emily said, before you take your action or after you take your action. And it makes for an interesting little mechanism because you're going to get a little bit more out of your turn, hopefully, in most cases, yes. than everyone else at the table. Some of the other actions include building that garden. This brings things over to your player board. On your player board, it's going to start out empty, of course, and there's going to be a display of garden tiles up here. What we have going on is an end game state, and it was triggered by there not being any of those garden tiles left. But you're going to take one of those garden tiles and place it in your garden, either on its path side or on its garden side. If you place the garden side, you can place it wherever you want. And when you place any tile on your board, you can cover up some bonuses and get those yes. bonuses. If you place the path side, you have to put the first one on any edge of your board. Makes sense. And then subsequent paths have to be placed so that it's adjacent to an already placed path. So you're effectively building a path through this garden. The idea here is to have garden tiles touching the path. At least one side. At least one side. It doesn't have to be completely surrounded by path. But as you can see here, I've built this path and all of these garden tiles are either touching that path or we'll get to this in a second, those fairy homes, because that's how you're going to score the points. If you have gardens on your board that aren't touching one of those two things, yep. you don't get points for those. Yeah, and so the paths themselves don't score anything, but the gardens need a path yeah. in order to score. So they're kind of working hand in hand there. And back to that 50-50 we were talking about, I think it's important to highlight right now. You're ultimately, at least in our experience, going to get quite a few points from this if you've yes. played it right. But you're also going to get nearly or could get nearly the same amount of points depending on how well you do here in the area control as well. Yep. The other actions are all to do with that deck building, yeah. card management. So then you can befriend a fairy. So you're literally drafting one of these cards that's here. You're going to have the number of players plus one. So I'll take one and it goes into my discard. There are some cards that one of your starter cards allows you to 
take it and immediately put it into your hand, which is pretty nice. You can start playing it right away. I'll take one. The rest of the players will each take one. Anything left over will go to the bottom. Um, and one of the end conditions is if we run out of cards here in the deck. Yeah, I do think that would... My guess is that's likely the last thing that's going to trigger the end game because the way those cards do kind of recycle in there, literally all the cards would have to be taken out of this deck into players' hands. But we found in our play that that happened more often than you'd think. And then with yeah. four players at the table, if people keep taking that action because they see cards that they want, that could go well, pretty quickly. And the cards are pretty juicy, right? They yes. score you points. They do a lot of maneuvering with the stuff on the area control board. And so you're kind of, you see something come out, you're like, oh, well, I want that one too. And I want that one too. I can see how you can kind of go through them pretty quickly. And some of the other ones there let you do that cycling through. There's another action that allows you to, you may discard one card out of your hand, and then you draw back up to five, a hand size of five. Now this is how you're gonna basically cycle through those cards. So you can kind of start to build an engine. Mm -hmm. the, the card, the deck building almost feels a little bit more like engine building because yes. you can get some cards that let you score some opportunistic points. And if you have those situations either out here or on your player board, and you get those cards earlier, if you can play them as many times as you possibly can, the and you the get points. those same points over and over and over. Now. That's not going to be how you win the game, I don't think. I don't think so. But, I mean, the last action helps you with that as well. The last action is letting you play an additional card. So if, if it's yeah. your turn, you're playing one either before or after. And then the helping hand allows you to play another card. So if you had that engine you're talking about, and you're trying to just kind of cycle through your cards and get those high-value points out there, you just keep playing it, and you kind of try to cycle through it as much as possible. Yeah, but remember, this is a game about following. So all the other players are going to follow you. And... I found in many cases, I was thinking a little bit more about what the other player might do. Yeah. If I take this action, great, I get to play my card, but what if right. I allow you to play a card and you were thinking that you were going to take that action to play the card on your turn, but exactly. now I've just given you that gift exactly. to play that card now and it sort of accelerates what you were trying to do. It's a really, there's some it's definite thought as you take these actions. And as you take these actions, you're gonna keep doing this turn after turn around the table until one of four things happen. We already mentioned a couple of those. If this deck of cards runs out, yep. which is gonna be a while, uh, that's one thing. If the fairy homes run out, now we didn't mention this, but the fairy homes, there are five tiles, one that represents each of these areas. And when, as soon as one player has 10 kinship tokens in one of those areas, they immediately get the corresponding fairy home and they can put that anywhere on their board. This is key because you're going to be able to put that strategically such that any garden tile touching it is going to score double. So yes. those garden tiles don't even have to touch the path, but as long as they're touching the fairy home, they're going to score double the points that they would if they were touching a path. So they can be very important. And it is one of the other end game triggers, not to mention those kinship tokens. If any one player runs out of them, mm -hmm. that's going to end the game as well. And then the last way, like David said earlier, is if the garden tiles run out, like happened in our game. Yeah, that is what happened. I think that's either that or the fairy homes, I think, will be running out, especially in a four-player game. Yeah, I think those fairy homes would be very contentious. Someone's going to like, I'm going to get the nature one, I'm going to get the fae one, and they'll go pretty quickly. Anyway, that is basically the rundown of this area control, tile placement, little bit of deck building slash Part engine management. building. If you have any questions about fairies, put them down in the comments below or check out their Kickstarter, which is either running or soon will be running when you're watching this. Until next time, of course, make sure everyone has fun at the table and we'll see you then.